Wednesday in Holy Week, Mark 14, 12 through 21. If you take the time to actually read these things, what I'm putting in front of you, you'll notice that uh, this is actually happening on Monday, Thursday. I, I pray that you forgive me. Uh, there's a lot going on during Holy Week here, just so much, and I can't get it all in. So I wanted to jump there. <clears throat> now, this is right before uh, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. That'll be tomorrow. We'll get to talk about that tomorrow. But here we get Jesus telling the disciples to prepare the Passover, right? And that's when a couple of disciples go and they find uh, the house and say Jesus would like to eat here. It's probably the same guy who let him borrow the donkey on Palm Sunday. Not for sure, but probably. It's a good guess at least, right? But then Jesus and his disciples go there and they prepare. And Jesus gives this crazy thing where he just drops a bomb on all of them and says, one of you will betray me. Which has got to be earth shattering for all of them to hear this. Except Judas, he knows it's him. But that's beside the point because the interesting thing is all the other 11 are looking around to each other and, and they're curious, they're wondering, and they ask Jesus, all of them, is it I, Lord? Is it I? I would think that you would know if you were going to betray your brother, your best friend. Maybe not. But then that is a scary little thing that he had 12 disciples and none of them were sure that they were good enough to never betray him. It says something about the sinful man. It says something about us. Because my goodness, just think about that. If the disciples weren't sure if they would ever betray Jesus or not, then I have to number myself with them. I'm no better than them, certainly. And then I've got to admit that, yeah, I wouldn't know either, especially put there in time and place. I would be the exact same thing as them, probably worse. But, I mean, let's be honest. We're all sinners falling short of the glory of God here. And I know a lot of times we like to, to put ourselves maybe on a little bit of a pedestal, at least a pedestal higher than Judas here. But are we really? Should I number myself with those who are sure that they would never sin against their Lord, sure that they would never betray him? Or should I number myself with the sinner? Maybe even number myself with Judas. Knowing that if I had the chance, I very well might have betrayed him in real time and real space. Well, it's really interesting there because Jesus doesn't, doesn't tell them who it is. He just kind of lets it hang there. And I think there's a reason for that, to just let it sit there. It's this law, this damning law for all of them to search their hearts and realize, my goodness, I, I can't say for certain whether or not it's me or not. But then Jesus, he goes one step further. And he comforts them. And that's what they need, right? But he doesn't comfort them uh, with some sort of self-assurance, right? He doesn't go up to Peter or to John or to Andrew or any of them and say, hey guys, don't worry, you're, you're pretty good. You're, you're in the clear. Uh, no, instead he just goes ahead and he institutes the Lord's Supper. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, like I said, but that's gospel right there. Pure gospel. In the midst of doubt, and fear, and trembling. Jesus gives them gospel. Jesus gives them himself. And so maybe when we are here sitting and doubting and wondering, is it I, Lord, who would ever betray you? Maybe that's just the wrong question uh, to ask, because of course it is. It's you. But then ask the question, but Lord, are you still there to save me? And then go to communion.